We breathe using three groups of muscles, the diaphragm, the intercostals and the abdominals. These muscles receive their nerve supply from the brain via the spinal cord. If someone has a spinal cord injury, some or all of these muscles can be paralysed. When the diaphragm contracts, it moves down and we breathe in. Its nerve supply is from C3, 4 and 5 in the spinal cord in the neck. The intercostals have two layers that either lift or compress the rib cage when we breathe in or out. Their nerve supply is from T1 to T11 in the spinal cord. The abdominal muscles are mainly needed for breathing only when we want to help force air out, such as coughing or during and after strenuous exercise. Their nerve supply is from T6 to T12 in the spinal cord. This person has recently suffered a spinal cord injury at the level of C5 in the neck. This means they can't use their intercostal or abdominal muscles to breathe because they are paralysed. Their only working breathing muscle is the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts and moves down, creating negative pressure inside the chest and the person breathes in. However, in the first few days and weeks following a spinal cord injury, there is a phase of spinal shock when the paralysed muscles have no tone and are flaccid, which means they are completely slack or limp. Now the negative pressure inside the chest causes an adverse effect because the intercostals are flaccid, they are not stabilising the ribcage and the chest collapses and is pulled inwards by the diaphragm action on inspiration. At the same time, the abdomen rises because the organs are being displaced by the downward movement of the diaphragm. This condition is known as paradoxical breathing because of the reverse pattern of movement seen in the chest and abdomen. It is also sometimes called seesaw breathing. It can lead to respiratory distress or even respiratory failure as the person's work of breathing is greatly increased. Over a period of between several days to weeks following injury, spinal shock resolves gradually and the paralysed muscles develop tone, often in the form of spasticity. The chest mechanics then improve and paradoxical breathing reduces, as does work of breathing. Outcomes will be more favourable if weaning from ventilation is delayed until this stage is reached.